Hello friends, uh, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will look uh, how to use SQLite database in Blazor server application. And uh, we'll be using uh, Microsoft Entity Framework Core in order to perform all the CRUD operation. Okay, so in order to do this, I'll be using Visual Studio 2019 in order to create a Blazor server application, as well as I'll be using SQLite Studio in order to verify the data which will, which will be generated in uh, the SQLite database okay so first thing first let's go to Visual Studio and uh, create the Blazor server application so in order to do that uh, I'll be clicking on this create a new project button and uh, from this project template uh, window I'll be selecting this Blazor app and click on next here we will give a project a name I'll just like product application okay and uh, I'll click on create and from this window I'll leave everything as it is and just click on create and I'll wait for the appli application to get created and loaded into Visual Studio here now it's done so uh, in order to uh, create this CRUD application or oh, I'll be requiring few of the NuGet packages so let's install them first so in order to do that I'll just go to dependencies and I'll click on manage new git packages and uh, in the browse section I'll be looking for uh, entity framework this entity framework code.sqlite so this is the one package uh, which is required in order to perform operation uh, in SQLite database so I'll be installing this so I'll click on install I'll click on OK and I'll accept all the license agreement. I'll wait for it to get installed. Okay, now it it is installed. The second package which I'm going to install is Entity Framework Core dot Tools. Ah, uh, where it is? Yes, here it is. So uh, I'll be uh, using uh, various migrations uh, in order to update a database. So this tool will be really helpful uh, in order to execute this entity framework uh, uh, commands through the package manager console. Okay, so for that, I'll be requiring this package. So all the packages are now installed. So next, what we are going to do is we are going to this uh, data folder. And here I'm going to add a class called product. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, this class is the center of the application. So uh, the, uh, the whole idea is that we will be creating a product table in the SQLite database and we'll be performing all the various uh, operation on it. Okay. So I have already written the code and uh, what I'm going to do is I'll just bring that code here so that uh, I can avoid typing the video. Okay. So I'll explain you this code. Uh, what it is is like uh, this product class is having and uh, property called ID, name, price, description, and quantity. That's it. We'll we'll try to keep everything as simple as possible. Okay. Now this uh, class will act as the entity uh, which will be mapped to a table uh, inside the SQLite database. Okay. The next thing uh, what we are going to add is we are going to add another class that will be product D context okay so as before I have already created this class so I'll just bring it here I'll just remove this code okay so in order to use this uh, DB context we have to bring in few namespaces so I'll be using this uh, Microsoft entity framework core I'll bring those namespaces now what this uh, DB context class will uh, allow us to do is that it will allow us to uh, make connection to uh, the database the SQLite database and perform various operation on it okay so uh, here in the constructor what I have done is that uh, we have passed the DB context option uh, and the same option is passed to its base class next what we have done is that we have created a DB set as a public property and this DB set uh, is of type product okay the next thing what we have done is that uh, 
we have overridden this on model creating uh, method uh, so in order uh, that we can have some seed data so whenever this database will be created we'll be having this phone number of product already there in the table so that we can work on it okay now the third thing uh, or the third class which I'm going to add in this data folder is the product service okay product services okay now uh, I'll bring the code first product service okay now this product service class what it does is it uses the product DB context as well as it expose four different uh, asynchronous method of cloud operations like for example the first one is the grid product async it returns the product from the DB context okay the second one is add product once you pass the product in it, it uh, adds to the product DB set as well as it saves those ch changes. The third one is update one. Uh, what it does, it first it goes and it finds the product. If the, uh, the product exists, then it updates it. And the fourth one is it uh, in order to delete, right? So in order to delete a product, it accepts uh, a product and it removes it from the database. Okay, so these are the four uh, CRUD methods which this service provide. Okay, uh, now we have all our basic classes ready. So next, what we are going to do is we have to go to uh, the startup class and register our DB context as well as product services so that they are available in uh, the application for use. So uh, first, we are going to register our DB context. For that, we are going to come to this configure services in our startup class and. Uh, we are going to register it. So we'll go to service add DB context. And here we are going to provide the name product DB context. And uh, we are going to pass the option. And in this option, what we are going to do is we are going to say use equal light okay and we'll bring the namespaces and here we are going to pass the connection string source equal to products dot db so this is the name of our uh, database which will get created once we execute the application okay uh, so we have registered our DB context next we will register our uh, product services okay so we will do is uh, we will register as uh, scoped and here is yes, product services okay so this is the changes which we uh, require in our startup class now we are done now Next, we are going to uh, go to this index.razor component. We are going to remove this code. And first, we are going to bring in the namespaces so that uh, we can have access to all this uh, product, product DB context and services, like uh, basically this product class. Okay, next we are going to inject as, uh, inject the project service, okay. So uh, these are the two things which we require in our index.razor class. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste a few of the code. And I'll explain you each and everything. But before that, let me complete the code and bring the other part of it. Okay, so here we are going to write the code section. And let me bring the last part of this code. Okay, now it's copied. So let me explain you what exactly this code is doing. So in the code section, first I have created a list of products, uh, that is list of products, and name the variable as products. Now this variable is binded uh, to this HTML table out here. So what we are doing is that uh, we are um, uh, we are uh, plotting every uh, sorry we are populating every list item into this table as well as what we have done is that we have added an extra column and provided uh, a button so that the user can delete 
uh, any of the rows if you want okay now the next section of this uh, HTML code is that uh, we have added a form so that the user can add a new item or a new product to the database okay the next part of it is uh, the update one uh, here the user can update any existing uh, product to the database okay since our code is ready everything is ready uh, what we uh, is gonna do is like uh, we'll just build this application and see if everything is fine and nothing is breaking okay cool okay uh, since our build has passed and nothing is broken so we'll move it uh, we'll move to the next step next step and uh, we are going to open this package manager console and here uh, what we are going to do is we are going to add add migration to the database and uh, after that we are going to update the database so that uh, the tables are created uh, the database is created and the table itself is created okay so first we are going to write add migration and we'll give a name initial commit and we'll wait for the command to execute yes now uh, the command has executed successfully and here we can see that uh, a migration class is added and we can see every uh, property of has been added along with the data which we wanted to get created in the initial table okay so since the migration has been created uh, we'll just close it we will go back to the console and we will type the command update database now what this update database will do is it will find all the pending uh, migrations uh, in this project and it will execute them since we have only one this initial commit so basically it is uh, first going to create a database and then create the table product table and then populate the table with this initial record which we have uh, mentioned in the override uh, method model creation on one model creating method okay so i'm just going to press enter and we'll wait uh, for the database to be created and just keep an eye here maybe should give refs yes here we can see uh, the products and database have been created now in order to verify whether this uh, a table and uh, is created or not what we are going to do is we will just open the location for this folder project now this uh, product database is here we we'll just copy this file location just minify minimize this and we'll go to SQLite studio and here we are going to add a database open the path location we will go paste it and here we are going to select the database okay now we'll click on okay now once we double click on this here we can see that uh, the migration table is created as well as this product table is created once we double click on this table here we can see uh, the properties equivalent column has been created over here and if you go to data here we can see that uh, the four record which we mentioned uh, in our db context class this is product with uh, ID 101, 102, laptop, Microsoft Office, laser mouse, and USB, etc. Uh, they are present here. Okay. Now, uh, if you go back to the index.razor and uh, here what we have done is that we have uh, overridden the on initialize async method. So as soon as this component get initialized, it will call this refresh product. Now within this refresh product what we are doing is that we are calling service dot get product async means uh, whatever uh, item uh, this product is having or whatever number of product this db context is having this will be returned and uh, the same will get populated in this table okay so once we execute this application we should see four number of records in the table okay so what we are going to do is we are going to directly execute the application without debugging and we should expect 
the table to be populated. Okay. 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 Yes. Now here we can see uh, this table is populated with all four records which we are having in the database. Okay. Now next uh, we'll start with the uh, addition of new product. Here what we are going to do we are going to give a new product name. Uh, let me say office. The price of it will be twenty. D999 and uh, we want to order like 100 quantities suppose description this is office application now once we add this product it should go and uh, get added to this table here okay so as well as it should get uh, displayed here so I'm going to click on add product here we can see a new product has been added to this table and if you go back to the SQLite studio and refresh the database here we can see that uh, uh, the new record has been appended to this table okay so next what I'm going to do is I'll go back to this user interface and I'm going to click on uh, this record on clicking on this record this update product form is getting populated and if you want to update any of this, uh, we just need to provide the new values and click on this update uh, product button. So for this USB storage, uh, I'm just going to remove the storage part and increase the price by 599. And we can see that uh, its record number is 1004 and it should get updated now. I will click on update, go to the database, refresh it. And here we can see that both the values have been reflected okay so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, delete this laser mouse from this record for this uh, I'll just click on this button and this record should disappear from this table as well as from the database as well so I'll just click on this so it is deleted from the user interface now if you go to the SQLite studio and refresh now that record has been deleted okay so uh, that's it uh, from this video I hope uh, you find this uh, video helpful thank you for watching have a great day